Welcome to our Tuesday morning Mind the Moment gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. This is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and I am absolutely delighted to be here with Rebecca, Re Rebecca Wing, licensed clinical, licensed certified professional counselor and mindfulness instructor with Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. So nice to have you here this morning. Good morning, Rebecca. My pleasure. Hello, everybody. Hel happy autumn. Good to be with you all. Yes, happy autumn. And depending on where you are, the, the weather here is just lovely and bright in, in the uh, Boston area. I know uh, Rebecca's coming to us from Maine. Beautiful colors up here. Absolutely gorgeous uh, foliage display happening up here. So oh, special. Yeah. Love this time of year. <laughs> so today we'll start off uh, typically with a question for the group. Rebecca will share a question with us. Yes. And, so I'll uh, go ahead. Yeah. And then um, so she'll after that, uh, we'll have a little chat. She'll share some thoughts with us and then we'll have a um, about a 12 minute practice. And for those that are new, uh, we'll have a mix of guidance and a little bit of silence that's typical. Um, so no worries, we'll, uh, Rebecca will guide you all along the practice. So if you are new, a special welcome to you. And with that, if you can go to the bottom of your screen and open up your chat, and when you open up the chat, you'll notice at the bottom, you can click the blue drop down menu that says host and panelists, you can change that to everyone. Everyone will be able to see your comments as they come in. Um, so yes, Rebecca, what kind of question do you have for us this morning? So the question is, what emotion do you, do you experience <clears throat> when feeling impatient? What emotion do you experience when feeling impatient? because we're gonna be talking about patience today and sometimes we need to look at the other side of the quality. So there's patience, but then of course there's impatience. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be exploring that ability to cultivate a state of uh, uh, waiting, uh, which of course is what patience is. So yes, good, good, good uh, responses already. Anxious, ang anxious, anxiety, frustration, of course. <laughs> Anger. Impatience with the impatience. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, anger. It, it is a it's a it's a broad range of emotions, and they're and they're all oftentimes with impatience very uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this aspect, you know, when you think about the quality of of what patience really is, and how we cultivate more skill at it. Uh, so much of it is learning how to do what we do in meditation. You know, in meditation, you're working with your thoughts, right? Coming and going, you're recognizing they're there and then they're not there and coming back to your breath and recentering yourself and, you know, how easy it is to at times. And I'm sure, especially for those of you who are just sort of starting on your journey of developing a meditation practice, how impatience can really arise with, with our own mind of, you know, for crying out loud, stop thinking, or I don't, I, you know, I shouldn't be doing this, this way. I, I, I want to be calming down. And, you know, that quality of impatience can really, of course, add more energy to the emotion as we're sitting in meditation. So this aspect of learning how to drop into the to present moment and be with what is as it is, is really what patience is. And can I learn how to, to, tolerate or develop tolerance for uncomfortable sensations, experiences, whether they be inside or in the outer world. And that's the aspect that we're going to get more and more sort of skilled at simply through the art of meditation. And mindfulness, of course, is that other piece of recognizing that when I'm walking around during my day, if things aren't going the way I think they should go, or in the timely fashion at which I think they should be proceeding, it's another recognition. Well, I, I want to develop some, some ability to feel at home within myself while I'm waiting for things to change. 
because of course it always changes. That sense of wanting things to happen right away is a forgetting that in fact, this thing will happen, whatever it is that's not happening now, eventually something else will happen, becomes more and more of that skill of remembering, uh, a sense of confidence that I can be with this right now. I can rest into myself, my breath, my body while I wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those, what you bring up is so important because you know that connection between what happens during meditation and what happens during our daily lives. There's, mm -hmm. especially with patients, there's such a, a direct connection. Yes. Um, and we can, with meditation, we can really practice being with things as they are. So, Sylvia, um, Sylvia Borstein is a wonderful author. She, her definition of patience is this. Patience is more the quiet moment to moment adjustment to unpleasant circumstances done in the knowledge that this unpleasant moment is as it is and that eventually it will change. And I like that quiet moment to moment adjustment to unpleasant circumstances. It's not like it's one and done. Feel the impatience rise and I have to settle back down and it comes back up again and then I have to settle back down. And that, that riding of these moment to moment experiences of feeling unpleasant, unpleasant feelings. Yeah, and, and the quiet in there is, is important. You know, yeah. giving, giving it that time or that, um, that space to kind of change. Yes, indeed. Hmm. So shall we do a little practice in the, in Absolutely. the spirit yeah. of patience? Yeah, so let's do that. Sounds so good. Find a way to get in your chair where you feel upright and at, and at ease, and really bringing that quality of dignity to your posture. So as you drop in, experience an awareness of the sensation of your body as it sits in the chair. Attending to the sensation of the chair beneath you. With feet flat on the floor, I can sense my feet connected to the floor. And noticing how the hands rest. Dropping more deeply into the body we notice the interior sensations, pleasant sensations, unpleasant sensations, neutral sensations. Sense and intend the ability to be with whatever is arising inside the body in this moment, bringing a sense of patience to whatever you're noticing now. Find your breath. Notice its rise and fall with gentle attention. A soft awareness to whatever the breath is doing in this moment as it is.
as you notice the thoughts arise, we can let them go with this quality of freedom from judgment, impatience, and drop more deeply back down into the body, being with body and breath. As emotions and thoughts arise, we allow them to be as they are, cultivating a quality of patience in the body. I can drop back down into breath with gentle awareness. By now, we can notice that things have changed. Comings and goings, not the same as before. We relax back into breath and body, trusting and recognizing the ebb and flow of change. Resting in awareness while waiting.
Notice the drift, no problem. We drop back down in, inhabiting the body and the breath with gentle attention. As we move to the end of the practice, drop the form of it entirely. You can give your mind permission to do whatever it wants. And now just simply rest. So not doing much of anything, just resting. As we end the practice, allow yourself to experience some appreciation for the practice itself, knowing that this form of meditation is available to us to help us relieve our suffering and that we can experience gratitude for taking this time to practice. So when you're ready, drawing in that breath, perhaps a little stretch, as we end the meditation. Thank you very much, Rebecca. You're welcome. <clears throat> I, I think I want to tell a short story to illustrate patience. Yeah. So um, a week ago, I decided that I needed a new pair of pants because my winter pants have worn out. So I decided to go to Macy's, which is a big department store, two floors, huge at the main mall. I haven't been to a department store in probably three years because of the pandemic. So I walk in, it's a giant store, of course, and already I now I'm feeling a little bit, oh man, this is going to be a big job. So I find a couple of pairs of pants that I figure I could probably try on. And I move towards the uh, fitting room and there is a line of 25 teenage girls, all holding prom dresses, waiting to get into the try-on room. <laughs> and I'm looking at what is going on. And so suddenly <laughs> I feel this heat of impatience. Like I'm not gonna stand in that line. That's a ridiculous. And I recognize there was a big sale on prom dresses for some close out, you know, big sale. So all these girls getting their prom dresses early. So I start walking around the store in the concentric circles, trying to find another uh, fitting room. And it, it dawns on me that there isn't a single fitting room in the entire uh, store that's open aside from this one due to labor shortage. So now I, I am like, I've spent all this time looking for the pants. I'm now hot, my feet hurt, and I am very impatient. And so I realize in that moment, all right, what are my choices here? I mean, they're going to have to wait in that line, which I'm not going to do, or I'm going to have to just leave the pants and go. And so in that moment, I dropped down into my body. You can feel the discomfort. And I looked up and I started looking around. 
And so I looked around the environment and I started to realize the level of tension and impatience that was in that store was palpable. Everyone in that store, including the employees, were, were really stressed out and experiencing deep states of impatience. So I started to figure, well, where is there a quiet corner in the store? And I found that, in fact, the lingerie department was deserted. No customers, no salesperson, no cashier, nothing. So I found a rack of nightgowns that were shoved up against the wall. And I basically went behind the rack of nightgowns, <laughs> tried on my pants, <laughs> decided on a couple of pairs, and then I had to uh, then, of course, find a cashier. So I go to the cashier and there is a line of 10 people. Again, for God's sake, what is wrong with the store? How da, 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 I'm feeling out of patience again. So now I drop back in to my body. I take a few breaths and I look around the store and I realize, well, there's a shoe department over there. Probably not so many people in the shoe department. Thankfully, the cashier was there and there were only two people in line. So by the time I get to her, and I've been feeling this and building and patience all around me. Everybody's in the state of real deep dysregulation. So I say to the woman, as I go up to, this, to the cashier, thank you so much for doing this job today. I really appreciate the fact of how hard this must be for you. And this woman just said, thank you so much for being patient. You can't believe how horrible this has been. Yesterday, some guy threw clothes at me and told me to F off. And she was so uh -huh. relieved to be in the presence of someone who could actually acknowledge and thank her for what she has done. So what that basic fundamental lesson to me was that if I hadn't have dropped down into my body and looked up around and regulated myself and taken in the environment, I would not have been able to recognize that my suffering was not unique to me in that moment. So what happens with patients frequently is it actually opens up compassion. Because when you are waiting for things to change and feeling uncomfortable, you start looking around and start taking in the environment and realize, oh, this is an untenable uh, situation for more than just me. So that's my, my story. And I got a good two pair of pants out of it. I have to say, I had to ride the waves through the whole experience. And I had to go to bed at eight o'clock that night because I was so exhausted. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. A little story of patience there for you. Yeah, that <laughs> that's great. And think about, I mean, there's got to be hundreds of people that might have a similar story, yeah. you know, and how that, you know, can really resonate with us. Like mm -hmm. we can, we can feel just as you were describing that we could, we feel what you felt because mm -hmm. it's, it's prevalent now. And being able to tolerate the, the discomfort. I think a lot of people think that they're supposed to totally let go and relax and be totally fine. It's, it's not that way. You know, impatience means that there's some situation I'm in that's uncomfortable. And if I can get better and better at recognizing that and being with and feeling at home in myself while I'm waiting for that discomfort to end. And that's the thing I would, I really hope everyone can take away with this today is that in meditation, when we were practicing, you were not the same as at the beginning of the meditation as you were at the end. Why? Because we change, things evolve. So this is that recognition that it takes a lot of faith and trust that things don't stay the same and that we can over time learn to, to develop tolerance for the, for the discomfort in the moment while we're waiting for things to change. Yeah, very, so very true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's interesting as, as you were mentioning, this is your theme. I always post something online before the session and I found a, a similar quote to what you just said by someone named Joyce Meyer. And she said, patience is not the ability to wait, but how you act while you're waiting. Yeah, exactly. And that, of course, internally as well as externally. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You know, this is the biggest thing about mindfulness. We begin to recognize that, you know, we're not making uh, discomfort go away. We're changing our relationship to discomfort. So we're, we're learning how to be with a situation without adding anything to it. So I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling angry. 
And so now I have to find a way to drop down into my body, just like I do in meditating, and find my breath and feel whatever I'm feeling in my body and make uh, and allow that to be. And that allowing brings that quality of being able to sort of witness it and, and be with it without adding other layers on top of it, whether it be more thoughts or, or judgment about it within ourselves, towards ourselves, or whether it be outwardly expressing in a way that causes discomfort for other people. So that's a, that ability to witness while things don't feel so good is it really that the foundation of mindfulness in general, especially when you're out in the world, but also in meditation? Yeah, such practical advice. So thank you so much, Rebecca. You're welcome. Um, it's my pleasure. Really nice to have you with this um, very timely <laughs> subject. Um, <laughs> So just a reminder to everyone as well, we'll be back tomorrow morning, Wednesday. I'll share the, the link for tomorrow, Wednesday. You can just click on that and um, save it later. Um, so thank you again for being here, Rebecca. And thank you to our community for joining. And um, you know, we look forward to supporting one another's practice throughout the week. Uh, so we'll see you again soon. Good to be with you all. Bye-bye. Nice to be with you too, Rebecca. See you soon.